Hi, I'm Peter Travers, and this is Popcorn, where we tell you what's going on at the movies. And there's a movie that's kicking off the fall season called Arbitrage, starring Richard Gere as a hedge fund manager, who's such filth. I mean, he is garbage, but he's played by Richard Gere, so it means he has charm. And there's a new actor in this movie called Nate Parker, who is a guy Richard Gere manipulates, because money manipulates. This is the first feature directed by Nicholas Jarecki, who's got brothers Andrew and Eugene, who are known for documentaries. And we gathered all three of these guys together at the Sundance Film Festival in January at the Washington Schoolhouse Hotel and got them to tell us what this is all about and why is money ruling our lives and why, is, why are we upset by money? Anyway, I'm talking too much. Let them talk. Here they are. Everybody wins. Yes. If we sell the company. It'll sell. If I lie for you. You don't have to lie. You didn't know about it. That's why I didn't tell you. I'm the chief investment officer of this company. What do you think they're going to say at the deposition? She didn't know. They'll take away my brokerage license, failure to supervise you, my name in every paper and blog while I visit what your What do you want me to do? Did you want me to let our investors go bankrupt? Is that what you wanted? You wanted people to get really uh, hurt. What gives you the you audacity to think that you be can go No, because it's <laughs> my job. Job. Yes. It's illegal. It's illegal. And I am your partner. You are not my partner. You work for me. That's right. You work for me. Everybody works for me. You just saw a scene from Arbitrage. And because I'm incredibly clever, I've invited the people, or three of the people, that have made this happen. The writer-director, Nicholas Jarecki. Hi. Richard Gere, who stars in it. And hey, Peter. <laughs> Nate Parker, who is in this movie, too, and who I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of. Thank you. So, so you guys all hated each other. <laughs> right from the beginning. From the start. It was a start. You can tell that in the movie. The there's this the test. negativity that's there. <laughs> and you called the movie Arbitrage for what reason? You just wanted on um, focus groups for people to say, um, what? Uh, well, no, you know, I thought it's, right. it's a great word. It sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and he actually knows this stuff. He knows so it. Yeah. To him, it's not an alien mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a real word, and it's a fascinating thing. It's getting two things at the same time, buying low and selling high, but right away, because you know something others don't. Mm -hmm. So there's an exploitation built in. And I kind of thought this character of Robert Miller was an emotional arbitrageur with all the people in his life. So he, he was using them as pieces in his you know, chess game, and uh, he was doing trades with other people's lives. And so I thought the term fit quite well. Plus, it starts with A's, so it always shows up first in the program. Now, <laughs> <Nah, laughs> we've got <laughs> to something like that. that. Yeah, we've done that. Your mother and father both are in this? Both were traders, and uh, so I got I had a lot of knowledge of the markets from them. And uh, I ran my own business for several years, and. Uh, there's a scene in the movie where a guy, he writes a deal on a menu, and that was something I did, so I uh, freaked the other guy out, but he signed it. <laughs> and, Nate, you have nothing to do with any of this arbitrage that's going on in the movie. Can you explain a little? Yeah, it's interesting. Point? It's actually quite the contrary. Like, when you look at a film like this where money is the god of all these people, and you go to the other side, and it's like this whole 1%, 99%, and you get to my side where because there's no liquid, you know, asset, uh, the things that are valuable to you are family, mm -hmm. you know, respect, uh, you know, uh, loyalty. So in the same way, you know, I talked about it last night, in the same way that he's, you know, leveraging everything to protect this one thing that has been like the, the cornerstone of his life, which is money, I'm doing the same thing. For me, loyalty is everything. That's all we have, family and loyalty. And because he's done such great things for my family, I feel like, you know, I'm actually considering, because one of the things the guy says, you know, you know, do you think this guy is going to, you know, is he like us? Like, is he going to really, you know, help, you know, help you? Was, and for me, it's never, my character never had a thought. I have, to, I have to protect this guy until the very end when it was like, wait a minute, this is real. And, what, and you know, what is, what is, am I willing to go to prison? You know, so um, I feel like I am so different because to me, my whole existence resolves around these things that aren't as tangible. Yeah, because what, what, He's asking you to do, mm -hmm. not Richard, who would ever ask you to do anything illegal. Right. But it's something that's compromising. It's a compromise of conscience, which is what this is about. But one of the great things in this movie to me is that the life you're living, no matter what it is, no matter how ingeniously you are stealing and then giving it back or doing something uh, Bernie Madoff-like, I, I get why it's appealing. <laughs> I get. <laughs> 
you're looking at this guy and you're saying, yeah, he's a sh but yeah. wow, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'd like to live that for a few minutes. And you're saying, I don't want that. Mm -mm. I don't want any of that. Mm -mm. And yet there's temptation. I don't want to give away things mm -hmm. in the movie, but it's, there's a temptation mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. because money is the <clears throat> temptation. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anyone who wouldn't want that and find it attractive. Mm -hmm. The surface of things is so seductive to all of us in all of our lives. The surface is so seductive. Of course, you're going to have initially that drive for, for the candy, mm -hmm. for the cake, for, for the sugar. Um, but, you know, we, we, one hopes that there is a, a wisdom element that starts to develop inside of us, that we're not carried away by that initial kind of animal attraction. And, um, and the movie's very much about that. There's something and it's in every scene in this movie. There's something, of, uh, and I don't see it in many movies. It's about sin, and it's about the temptation. And it's whether we can resist it or not, or the resistance should be hard. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of movies about drugs, and they say drugs are bad, and they don't explain that the people that are using them got something out of it. And maybe they destroyed themselves from it, but they got something out of it. Well, you know, there was a thematic question that we kind of came up with early on. We did an extensive rehearsal, which was really fun for a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, Really? Uh, that doesn't happen. Yeah, Richard happen. came over to my apartment. We worked through the script, and then with each principal cast member, we had, you know, four days to a week. And so we, we were able to bring it to life and rewrite it and test it out. Very easy. Um, very slow burn into it, which makes everything deeper. Yeah, he brought all these great teas. Um, I learned about tea. <laughs> I learned about patience. That's my addiction. Tea. <laughs> tea. Um, wow. But, uh, this is going places. <laughs> the, the tea. But in the, in the conversations, we, we devolved the theme, will you give up the power that you love to hang on to your last shred of humanity? And so that, I kind of felt, was like a, a thing throughout, you know, because it is seductive. Power, it's great. As a movie director, it's great. You go, yeah, too many cars on this street. Yeah, broom them out right away. Director wants no cars. Yeah, you come back, it's empty. It looks like the apocalypse. Put back some cars. Uh, cars coming in right <laughs> away, sir. Yes, <laughs> whisking. Um, so that is a very seductive thing that his character has. And, and each character has their own power. You know, and then will they give it up to get to, just to hang on to something? You know, we're talking about the last shred of humanity where we're at. We're not talking about like great, you know, achievements of brotherly love. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Nate's character is a great mirror because he's really outside that orbit of money, and but he's he has the same temptation and he's he, he's just trying to have a better life. And in this capitalist system, it, it really helps, you know, the money. So um, yeah, and, and it feels like it's that saying like you're only as faithful as your options. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I'm from a different world, but when it becomes an option, then you start to think about it. You know what I mean? Everyone wants to talk about all these people, point the finger. I mean, even with the 1% thing, you know, and I have feel, you know, it's an opinion about it, but at the same time, you never know until you're in that situation. You know, that whole absolute power corrupts absolutely. When you have it, and all of a sudden, it's like, wow, this is in my hand. Like, this is real right now. Uh, and I think that that's something that, you know, with the whole, you know, not to give it away, but when the money issue came up at first, I was like, are you kidding me? But then it starts to weigh on you. Like, look at my life. I'm living in, I mean, you saw where I lived when he came downstairs and it's in, it looks like a, a zoo, like cages. It does, and you think, and it, was, and it was picked very well. But then you think to yourself, like, a way out of this? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, symbolically, I was like underground where I lived. And this guy, symbolically, in the film, was always at the highest level of a building. And you think about, like, what, what does that look like to be able to get to the top? And you why know? shouldn't you have it, you know? Why right. should one group of people live one way and another Absolutely. group of people live another way? I mean, Absolutely. I always thought if I wasn't a filmmaker or some kind of successful entrepreneur, I'd be a criminal. Right. Because it's unacceptable to me that I wouldn't have the things that I want, that their society would be set up that way. So that's a drive, you know, to say, hey, it's not this balance. We've gone too far out mm -hmm. of balance. Yeah. And so, you know, that's, that's the drive of his character. He just wants a good life. Ladies and gentlemen, give them the old, all there right, you go. that was it, razzle dazzle, <laughs> <laughs> get a up. I did it, I sang. Thank Ooh. you, Peter! Yeah. 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 Yeah.